Joining me is Anna Kasparian, co-host of The Young Turks on Current TV and, of course, at theyoungturks.com. Two great stories to talk about, Anna. Let's start with Alabama schools. What's going on at Huffman Middle School? So Huffman Middle School, even though it's a public school, uh, has decided that they're still in favor of segregation, but they're not segregating based on race. They're segregating based on sex. Um, so what they're doing is they're putting their male students and their female students in completely different classes. <laughs> and it's not just about ac academics. It's also about social time. So they're not uh, they're even segregated during lunch. They don't have the same lunch break. So the whole reasoning for this is that supposedly the young boys are more efficient at learning certain th subjects like math. They believe that since boys have a constant surge of testosterone and since they're uh, more likely to be competitive, which of course I'm not buying either, um, they uh, should not be, you know, their educational development shouldn't be hindered by these little girls. Right. So the little girls are basically told like, you know, since you have a, a surge in estrogen once a month, well, maybe we should put you in different classes and, and do this type of target teaching. Yeah, so this is so funny because number one, it's scary because this is, this is not that different from like, for example, in Saudi Arabia when there's a big debate over whether women should be able to drive. That mm -hmm. taken back to when they're 10 years younger is basically this exact same thing. Yeah, I mean, Saudi Arabia sounds so extreme, but when you really think about it, the whole underlying message is that boys are more aggressive, they're smarter, they're more efficient than girls, therefore girls should be placed in classes where they won't hinder the educational development of these boys. But the thing is, the reasoning here is based on pseudoscience. I mean, if you want to have a conversation about how boys and girls communicate differently, um, maybe we should teach them in different ways. Okay, that's that's fine. But they're basically telling these little girls, you are not going to be good at math. You are not going to be good at science. Those are subjects that are reserved for little boys. And it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy for these little girls. And how does this um, so apply to lunch is the other question. Because if it's really about math and science, why are they also segregated at lunch? Well, it, I think the whole uh, lunch situation is a perfect example of how this isn't really about education. This is about, uh, in my opinion, some very conservative teachers and administrators worrying about these middle school students, uh, you know, having relations with one another. So they're just trying to keep them separate. I don't think this is about education at all. They don't have any real uh, science backing up their claims. And if they do, why are they not allowed to socialize during lunch? If parents want to segregate genders, then they would put these kids in private schools instead. Now, is there any, is, is, do we actually have any sense of, you said pseudoscience, are, are, are they pointing to anything real as to where they're getting these ideas? So far, I haven't read anything uh, that actually backs up what they're saying. They're basically arguing that, uh, you know, just this archaic notion that, uh, you know, boys are more aggressive, they're more competitive. You know, it's the kind of thinking that we saw back in the 1950s. Right. So that's why I refer to it as uh, pseudoscience because it's the way people thought back in the day. It's the way uh, researchers thought back in the day. And as I said before, if you uh, want to have a discussion about gender communication, and how boys are more visual than girls or, or something like that. That's totally fine with me. But by telling you know, a certain group of students that they're not good enough to excel in a particular topic, you totally lose credibility. I, I don't believe that at all. I hesitate to even go here, but if we want to talk about actual differences between groups of students and how they learn, we have actual science that shows the big difference between children of authoritarian parents who tend to be more conservative and children of parents who are less authoritarian, more nurturing, and, and end up more liberal. And there's way more evidence that really they are the students that should be getting taught in two different ways than men and women. Of course, I don't actually support any of this type of segregation, but there's really more of a science case for segregating students based on the political orientation of their parents than by this. Of course, I'm sure they don't want to do that. Right. Of course, they don't want to do that. And, and you know, I don't I don't know too much about that in terms of uh, the differences in their learning abilities. Um, but I think that it's important to first of all, if you want to discuss uh, efficiency in the classroom, why don't we talk about uh, spending more money on public education rather than defunding it? Why don't we have a discussion about making classrooms smaller so teachers aren't stretched thin? They can focus on uh, a particular student's needs. I mean, it, that's what you would really propose in terms of uh, improving 
improving our education, but they don't want to have that discussion. I think that what they're really worried about is maybe a female student getting pregnant or something. So as a result, they're trying to separate the students so they don't have to deal with any of that. Yeah, because just like abstinence-only sex education, keeping men, uh, boys and girls in different classes will obviously prevent all pregnancy. Okay, Springdale uh, Dry Cleaners in Cincinnati, Ohio. They are mm -hmm. going, this picture of their, of their hanger with a, uh, an anti-choice message on it is going viral on the internet. What's the story there? So um, what's interesting is, of course, they've gotten a lot of backlash for this in, in you know, the recent day. Um, and I can understand that. But, you know, I was kind of thinking, I was having a discussion with Jane Huger, the host of the Young Turks, about why they would do this. And he was under the assumption that, well, maybe it's a religious business and they didn't really think about it before they did it. But it turns out that they've done this for two or three years now. And I I'm not really sure why the story has come up again, but it's so disgusting to bring back that imagery. You know, this is no mistake. They know exactly what they're doing. And in my opinion, something like that, something that brings back, uh, you know, the imagery of back alley abortions uh, would probably convince people to vote against legislation that would take us back to the 1950s. Yeah, that's the thing, because when I, when I see a coat hanger with an image that says, choose life, and I know the statistics, which is that if, if abortion is, is safe and legally accessible, you reduce the number of those back alley abortions, as do you by having access to birth control. This is almost really a pro-choice message in spite of the intentions of the owners. I think it's a pro-choice message for people that really sit down and think about it. Right. But at the same time, I think that, you know, the... the patrons of that dry cleaner probably, uh, you know, still the people that support that message probably don't think that deep into it. Um, and I think that it does bring up the very serious topic of what will happen to women if you do make it um, difficult to access a safe abortion. I mean, look at Mississippi right now. They literally have one clinic uh, that uh, offers abortions. And unfortunately, they have this new law that would force them to get admitting privileges from hospitals. And a lot of the hospitals there are um, conservative and very right wing, and they don't grant the admitting privileges. So that one abortion clinic in Miss uh, Mississippi is probably going to shut down. So what's going to happen to uh, people or women in Mississippi that need to get an abortion, either because they're in poverty or in an abusive relationship or they got raped. I mean, they're going to go to extreme measures. So what the dry cleaner uh, did in this case brings back horrible, violent imagery. And I think for anyone who sits down and really thinks about it, uh, they'll realize how important it is to have access to abortions here in the U.S. And not to mention that we just did a story, I think it was a week or two ago, that it studied the, uh, the, the outcomes of women one year after having been denied an abortion versus women who were able to get an abortion when they determined that they wanted one. Women denied abortions way more likely to be unemployed, way more likely to be sucking up those government resources, as we hear from the right, uh, uh, whether it be food stamps or, or welfare, so on and so forth. So it's very clear that there are significant long-term effects to not having access to legal and safe abortions. They're just the opposite of what conservatives presume to want. Absolutely. I mean, last year alone, we spent, the government spent $11 billion on unwanted pregnancies, which is part of the reason why President Obama wanted to make birth control accessible uh, to everyone that wants birth control. Um, and, you know, of course, Republicans are against that. And what I love is the whole pro-choice message. It's like, we're going to force you to have that baby under any and all circumstances. I know that some make exceptions, but you know, the staunch right wingers in Congress right now don't care about rape, they don't care about incest. If you get pregnant, it doesn't matter, you're gonna have the baby. You mean but the anti-choice, the anti-choice message. The anti-choice message, right, I right. love, the, I think that that's excellent framing. I should use it more often, but yeah, you're right. And, and as soon as that baby is born, well, what do you mean federal money? Why are you, you know, these welfare recipients? We should drug test them, these horrible people. <laughs> let's, let's cut funding for food stamps. I mean, it's just despicable behavior. And that's not what pro-life pro, uh, or anti-abortion uh, is really about. If you're really pro-life, then you would want to support those babies after they're born, after forcing their mother to have them. No question about it. All right, Anna Kasparian, co-host of The Young Turks, Monday through Friday on Current TV. I think I have this right. It's 7 p.m. Eastern on Current and then 9 p.m. Yep. Eastern at theyoungturks.com and on YouTube. Is that right? Yes, correct. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, Anna. Thank you, David.